You have to see this. Former Marine Steve Kalaszewski tells us the true meaning of Memorial Day. We're going to go to the Arlington National Cemetery. We're going to go to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. We're going to hear a true story about a soldier named Lee who gave the ultimate price. Take a look at this. This is all about Memorial Day, remembering those that have paid the ultimate price for us to have this freedom. And I think about Steve Kalaszewski. You know, you see him on the program. He's part of VFN TV, but also he served for us. He served two tours of duty in Iraq, and he shares with us the real true meaning of Memorial mm. Day and even takes us to the changing of the setting of the flags that takes place on a Memorial Day at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. This is Steve Kalaszewski. When I say this story, I, I want to just say something in the beginning. A lot of people aren't fully aware of the difference um, between Veterans Day and Memorial Day, and they'll kind of uh, um, go up to a veteran and, and they'll kind of shake their hand and, and um, almost in a, in a celebratory moment. And some people might not understand that if a veteran looks in a kind of a, a downcast way, and the reason why um, I want to share this is that Memorial Day isn't the same day as Veterans Day. Veterans Day is is remembering those that are serving and those that have or those that have served. And um, but Memorial Day is remembering those that didn't come home, remembering those that were prisoners of war that have yet to be identified or, or what happened to them. And so often. Um, we look at our, our, our service members, and it's just service members. They, they don't have names. They, we, don't, we don't really understand the gravity of, of these weekends, and we look at it as it's just you know a day off or an opportunity for a picnic. But um, this is a really special weekend for me because there's a lot of people that I, was, I worked very closely with, and they're buried in a, in a, in a cemetery um, in Virginia. It's called Arlington National Cemetery. And... Um, Pat, can you show that one last image? Um, a lot of people see this image, and, um, and they're just headstones. But on each individual one of those headstones, just like any other cemetery, there's somebody's specific name. It says the branch that they served in. It says their specific rank. It says where they served and if they had any distinguishing medals. And... Um, but I just want to tell you about one guy. Um, can you go to that first picture? Um, this was my corpsman. Um, sorry. His name was Lee Hamilton Deal. I have a crazy thing on my foot that's bugging me. Sorry. Um, funny story about Lee is the first time I met him, we were on a, on a rifle range working on our night vision and learning how to shoot with our night vision goggles that had a laser emitted from our rifle. And in between sticks of fire, we were, sh we were firing, and I found out that he was actually uh, the place kicker. This is really bugging me. The place kicker or the punter, whatever you want to put it, for... Now I'm lopsided. <laughs> for... Uh, for uh, the Louisiana State University, LSU. And he is a phenomenal athlete. And he tells me this funny, this, this, the, the amazing thing about war is you will be literally receiving gunfire and laughing as hard as you can because there's guys telling you funny stories. But with Lee, uh, we were on this, on this rifle range, and he's telling me this story that, you know those like uh, Super Bowl of events or big, big school events that they have like the halftime show, and if you kick a field goal, you win like a $100,000, you know, prize? Well, his name gets called, and he was just like, I guess I should go. So he is like literally addressing the ball about to kick, and they say his name, and they're like, wait a second, and they find out who he is, and they're like, no, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't do this. But um, he just had a way of telling stories, and we would literally meet people and you can see this picture and we're meeting just a, a, an Iraqi family and, and their little child had a problem. He breaks out his bag, stops the patrol and you know, whether they had a, a sniffling nose or a cold, but that was Lee's heart. Lee had such a heart for people and, and, um, he took care of us. He was a Navy guy, but, uh, they call him greenside corpsman. And, um, 
But on some of our operations, we got some intelligence that uh, we kind of went outside of our area and we found out where some bad guys were. And um, there was about six of our trucks. We walked, we actually drove up to this compound and really didn't know what was going on. And as soon as the first truck came up to this building, they started taking fire from the enemy immediately. Their truck went down, and uh, we had to dismount and basically move on this target. And um, in Iraq, there's like these long chicken coops, if you can imagine where people like harvest chickens and stuff. But this one was not a chicken coop. It looked like a chicken coop, but it wasn't, and it had a whole false wall. And what we didn't know was that we had basically walked in on basically the number two target in all of Iraq. And um, his name was Zerkawi. And uh, he's, he's been in a lot, of, a lot of headlines, and it's basically ISIS. What, what, I'll skip all that. But anyways, long story short, Lee had no idea, and he walked in on this chicken coop, and um, he started receiving gunfire from two... Iraqi basically 762 machine guns and he had there was basically two strands of fire in between them and he had no idea because it was pitch dark and he ended up taking a bullet to the neck and went down and he was about 20 20 yards in this chicken coop and Neil was behind him and had no idea and he threw a smoke bomb and our smoke grenade and basically cut all of our visibility and we realized that we had no idea where Lee was and another guy on the team crawled 20 yards and um and he pulled lee out and i was outside with my team we were doing a cordon which is like security to make sure nobody would come up um on the on the objective or we would basically kill anybody that was trying to run away and um i had no idea that that lee was killed and then i heard you know if you ever have someone that goes down and they identify it you've got your name, and then you've got the last four of your social on your shoulder, and it's called your your kill number. And um, and they said his number over the net, and I, I knew it was him. And um, I can still see, because you're wearing night vision, it was just like everything had that green haze, and they told me I had to get him off the objective, and I'm literally carrying Lee's body. And um, and I put him on the truck away, because the, the objective still wasn't even secure yet. And um, finally, when we secured the whole objective, we had found out that this was like a, a, a major hub of um, Al-Qaeda activity, and we didn't even know it, and we had basically just walked into a hornet's nest. But once everything got secured, we called in two F-16s that were supposed to come and drop a 500-pound bomb on this objective, and we had probably eight different trucks, and another platoon came in to pr provide security. And I'm staring at the objective outside, my, outside of my, I'm in the Humvee, and you're so trained to respond and not even think. And I was so scared of myself because I couldn't even cry. And all I could think about was that there's no more jokes from Lee. You know, it's just, he's, uh, he's gone. And um, can you go to that next picture? This is, uh, this is actually the last, last day. He, he was in another team, and his team took this, took this shot of Lee. And um, we were going between houses, and um, and um, just seeing the people, and checking how things were. And you can go to that next picture. And um, this is Lee at the Rock. And what the Rock is is that if you're calling back to headquarters, or you're calling back, because we would go outside of Camp Fallujah, and we were one of the f few units that could take a house, and then do operations from that house. And when you would call back, they call them radio checks every 30 minutes. And you would say, hey, this is our location. This is where we are. And this is where we're going to go. And Lee would be on the other end. And he'd say, check Raj. And then he'd pass it on to the commander, let him know where we are. And um, that was the last, last day I saw Lee. And just like what Brother Greg is saying is that you have no idea when someone's going to be your last. And that is so real to me because I've literally, every time he says that, I think of Lee because 
I was just talking with him, just having jokes, eating an MRE, and then, and then we found out, hey, we got some intel. We're going to go to another another spot. We're like, okay, cool. Let's find out what's going on. And 45 minutes later, I'm carrying his body. And the reason why I'm, I'm telling you this is that when you hear people talk about Memorial Day is, hey, I get a day off. Hey, let's have a picnic. Oh, traffic. Is that this is why we celebrate Memorial Day. And I showed you that cemetery, and that's one cemetery. But there's cemeteries all around this nation, and it's got, it's got somebody's dad's name on there. It's got somebody's brother's name on there. And if you ever go to Arlington National Cemetery, Section 60 is the Iraqi war location. That's where all the guys that they're losing now that are fighting in Afghanistan and Iraq, it's, it's, it's called Section 60. Every... Throughout the entire cemetery, there's a section. And my first deployment was when we lost Lee. And if you've ever, ever been to a cemetery, it's like they had just prepared that plot, and there's like a couple, they're like getting ready to do a couple more rows. And we lost a couple guys the next deployment. And the most difficult sight I've ever seen in my life was that when we buried Lee and Mark and Chris was that not even two years later, there was probably 10 more rows in two years. So I just want to just take this time and just show you and just, um, this is what Memorial Day is about. It's not a day off. Is that we're remembering. If you ever get a chance to go to Virginia, I just encourage you to go to, to uh, Arlington National Cemetery. But I'm about to show you something. And Lee has a name. Like, we know where Lee is. Like, Lee's, Lee's buried there. Like, he came home. His family was able to have closure and see him buried. And his mom got his, got his flag. But there's a lot of people that never came home. There's a lot of people that became prisoners of war. Or they got lost in battle and they never came home. And in Arlington National Cemetery, there's one location. It's called the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And I believe it's since 1943 or 1953, don't quote me on the dates, that has been guarded 24 hours, seven days a week. And I want to say, I can't remember what, her, what which hurricane it was, but the president passed down to this unit and they said that there, there is a category, like five hurricane coming, and you are relieved from your duties if you would like to leave this tomb. And the commander of the unit said, sir, it's our honor to be here. And we will stay because this is, this is our calling. This is, this is what we're called to do. And every Memorial Day, what you're going to see is that there's, uh, there's one guard, and he's called a sentry. And he lays the flags, and it's called Flags In. And you're going to see him marching, and in the right of the frame, there's just, it looks like a white wall, and it's just a white tomb. But I just want to show you this and just remember that this is what Memorial Day is all about. It's not Veterans Day, but it means so much more than, than just a day off. Oops, play that.
That was so powerful. We heard, you know, Steve talking about, you know, his friend and, and the loss. And uh, I know that when he shared that at the VFN Dream Center, our hearts just melted and there was yeah. tears everywhere. But I'm grateful for Steve sharing because we need to connect with the reality of the price that people pay for us to have this kind of freedom. We need you know, that perspective. Yeah, we do need that perspective. And, you know, Steve talked about Section 60 in the Arlington National Cemetery. And as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact this is visitors coming in uh, to the Section 60 that Steve was talking about. Let's go there now. Powerful. I just want that just ingrained in my mm. heart, right? Absolutely. That that you know, just one, it's like one percent of us serves for this freedom, and we're so thankful for our soldiers. We're grateful for our president who stands up for our military and, and is standing behind to support them. And uh, our hearts are touched. When we get back from this break, we're going to be hearing uh, the Army uh, play taps on Memorial Day at the National Arlington Cemetery. Join us after the break. He told us, you know, and showed us what it was like changing the flag at the unknown soldier, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Well, this is actually the uh, United States Army Band playing and honoring, playing taps, and mm. honoring at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier on Memorial Day. Let's go there now. Well, we just thank God for everyone that served our country. And Memorial Day is different, as, he, as Steve said, than Veterans Day. These are the, the people who served us and gave the ultimate price their life. And you're a, maybe you're a family member. We hear about Gold Star families. Those are ones that lost their loved ones. We just pray right now. We want to pray for you. And if you join us in praying for our, our, our families that have lost their loved ones, and Section 60, as you saw, there's still people coming in there. My heart just breaks about that. We need to honor the freedom mm. that they gave their lives for. Father God, we just pray right now for our military. We thank you for the families that gave the ultimate price of a father, a daughter, a son, or a sister, God. Lord, our hearts break with them, Father God, but we're not going to let that be in vain. We're going to live like they died for in regards to standing up for our country and standing up for our Constitution and standing up for our, the rights that they laid their life down for. Father God, I pray that you would comfort their families. I pray that you would strengthen our president as he stands up for the military, God. And I pray, Lord, that you would prevent any more death from taking place of our military, Lord. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thank you for watching VFN TV. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com.